I'm Lisa Germain, a practicing endodontist in New Orleans, Louisiana. In my 25 plus years of practicing, I've seen lots of unusual anatomy. But unusual shouldn't be if you know what to look for. Root canal system anatomy has been studied and documented for an entire century. While these studies vary in their findings, the presence of a communication between the canal systems within the individual root is a very common observation. Many methods have been used to study root canal systems in, in teeth. Dr. Sergio Cutler, a good friend of mine, has done extensive work with laboratory micro CT imaging, allowing three-dimensional microscopic viewing of an extracted tooth with a voxel size of about seven microns. Now, it is important for you to know that a clinical CBCT device will have a voxel size of about 80 microns. These images depict some of the variations seen in the mesial roots of the lower molars. Variations in the morphology of roots and root canal systems create challenges which we, as dental practitioners, must be able to recognize. Endodontic therapy is predictable and successful only to the extent that the root canal system can be debrided, disinfected, and sealed against future contamination. In order to accomplish these goals, it is necessary to become familiar with the variability of the system we seek to treat. Of particular note on this micro CT image is a separate canal between the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual canals on this extracted lower molar. This canal is called the middle mesial canal. It's been my clinical experience that this occurs more often than reported in the literature. Whenever an isthmus is present connecting two canals, it should be explored for variations in the anatomy and additional canals. While it is clinically difficult to predetermine the presence of a middle mesial canal, there are some clues that make us aware that the anatomy will have an atypical canal system. The amorphous appearance of the mesial root of the first molar on this radiograph is one of them. Compare it to the mesial root of the mandibular second molar, which has a way more definitive lamina dura. Another important clinical observation is that if a root is wide buccalingually, it is likely to have more canals than a narrow root. Isthmuses are prevalent in all types of roots in which two canals are normally found. These include mandibular incisors, the maxillary and mandibular first and second premolars, the mesial roots of maxillary and mandibular molars, maxillary second molars, and the distal root of mandibular molars. Not all anomalies occur within the isthmus, but it's necessary to thoroughly explore this area and be aware of the anatomic variations that arise from this connection. This image was taken of the mesial root system of the lower first molar shown in the previous radiograph after the access cavity was prepared. Ultrasonic instruments may be used to trough several millimeters along the isthmus to obtain better access to the tissues associated with the isthmus or any potential hidden canals. However, special care must be taken to avoid a perforation in the furcation. After troughing the isthmus and exploring with a 15 hand file, a middle mesial canal was located. Clinically, this phenomenon can be quite elusive. Exploration of the isthmus in all mandibular molars is highly recommended. If you suspect there is a separate middle mesial, you should feel the same kind of tug back that you feel when you place your file into the orifice of one of your known canals. This post-operative image shows a separate middle mesial as well as two distal canals. Missing that middle mesial canal most assuredly would have resulted in endodontic failure due to inadequate cleaning of all of the contents of the root canal system. Endodontic therapy is predictable and successful only to the extent that the root canal system 
can be debrided, disinfected, and sealed against future contamination. In order to accomplish these goals, it is necessary to become familiar with the variability of the system we seek to treat. Rather than relying on the statistics, we should look at each tooth as having the potential for multiple interconnected canals. We should also be aware of the information we can gather from both radiographic and clinical evaluations. In addition, adequate access preparation Exploration of the interior of the tooth with magnification and illumination and a thorough understanding of potential anatomic variations in root canal morphology are necessary to perform successful endodontic treatment. <laughs>